United Methodist Church, and I have been assigned to work in this little green pickle-shaped country just north of India, south of China, called Nepal. And Nepal is a very diverse country. Hey, welcome. Just, just in time to see the maps, which are the best part of the whole presentation. <laughs> uh, so Nepal is, of course, most famous for Mount Everest, which is located here. Uh, but what folks don't know is just all of the different diversity that there is in Nepal. So uh, I just finished up visiting churches in Washington State, so I was reminded that Nepal is about two thirds the size of Washington State. It's probably probably two thirds the size of Northern California too. So it's 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 maybe about a quarter the size of California. Okay. So and I haven't remembered up here. I should know how many people there are, but I think there are almost 40 million. Almost 40 million? Like 38, 8 or Yeah, something. there's 31 million in Nepal. Oh. Yeah. A quarter our size, size. but the same population. Yes. And not much flat land. No. Now 60% of the population lives down here in what's called the Tarai, the low land of Nepal, which starts just above sea level, goes to about 3,000 feet in elevation. So that's the lowlands. And then you very quickly start going uphill. <laughs> and you get to this middle section here, which is called the Pahad, the middle hills, from about 3,000 to six or 7,000 feet elevation. And that's where about 30% of the population lives, as well as, of course, the political power, right? Kathmandu, with about six million people, is here in the Pahad. I used to work, I, I, back in Kathmandu, I lived for four years out in Ruka. Uh, and you saw some pictures earlier from there as well. Would you point to where that is on the oh, bottom? This one is yeah. right here. And in, where are you now? I'm back. I'm living in Kathmandu oh. again, but working in all of these different areas now. I work throughout our, our project areas. Uh, so you can see Everest is over here, and we have hard, we just have our hospital work over there. Most of our work is focused on the western half of country, which is where there's a higher human poverty index uh, and less, less income from things like tourism in that western part of the country. This white section on the northern border with Tibet, with China, is called the Himal Zone, because Himal means snowy mountain in the Nepali language. <laughs> so Himalayas, right? They're the, the snowy mountains. <laughs> Only about 10% of the population lives, you know, above 7,000 feet. I've certainly worked, I'll share with you some pictures from a village I worked in at 9,000 feet, uh, regularly crossed an 11,000 foot pass to get there, have visited villages at 12, 14,000 feet. Obviously nobody lives at 26,000 feet at the top of Everest, but you can just imagine with all these hills and valleys, how much diversity there is in the park. There are 126 languages tracked on the census. 60% of the population does speak Nepali as their first language, their mother tongue. But, you know, that leaves a lot of the population that speaks Kamagars in Ruka or uh, Madeshi down in the lowlands or Bajangi out here in the far west. And so within all of this diversity, you have climatic diversity and uh, cultural and, and ethnic diversity as well. Very diverse country. Can they understand one another speaking all those different languages? Local, local well, dialects? well, mostly people learn Nepali when they come to school. And, and we have a whole program in multilingual education. And I was part of that out in Ruka, where we worked with teachers to translate the national curriculum from Nepali into the Kammagar language and would print the textbooks in parallel with Nepali and Kammagar up to grade three so the children could start their literacy education in their mother tongue, but eventually learn the national language as well. Certainly when we do project development work, we try to work in the local language and that's why we're working through local community-based organizations as our social mobilizers, and, and uh, active community leaders all speak the native language of that region. Our project staff based in the field offices for the most part also learn it, 
Most of my Nepali colleagues know three or four languages, but nobody knows all of them. So when I go with Bhima from Kathmandu out to Bajang, she doesn't speak Bajangi either. So if I wasn't there, she'd still need that translated into Nepali for her. When I'm there, they'll usually translate to English because my Nepali is not great. But, but this, is, this is just this amazing, diverse 